Welcome to part five of the Cross Program Consolidated Monitoring Tool video series. I am Dr. Massey Kenzie Ship, Consolidated Program Administrator for the Piedmont Triad Region. The purpose of today's recorded presentation is to provide an overview of the compliance expectations for elements 14 through 17, Title III Part A activities. If your PSU does not receive Title III funds, PRC-104 or PRC-111, then you do not need to submit compliance documentation for this element in SharePoint. Before we begin this conversation about Title III Part A elements of the CPCM tool, you may find it helpful to have a hard copy or a digital copy of the tool so that you can follow along with me. The monitoring tool can be found on the Office of Federal Programs website on the Cross Consolidated Monitoring webpage. Element 14, Disseminations, Training, and Technical Assistance for English Language Development Standards. Understanding the WIDA Standards. PSUs will provide evidence from PD sessions at which the ELD standards were disseminated, evidence from PD sessions to show all teachers of English learners in the PSU understand how to implement the WIDA standards, and evidence of ELD standards dissemination to staff to include, but not limited to, web postings, brochures, articles, memos, and e-learning materials. Understanding the WIDA Standards Best Practices. Use these funds to provide preparation and professional development opportunities to all teachers of ELs and all leaders of schools in which ELs are enrolled. Thus, an LEA may provide training not only to those who exclusively, exclusively teach ELs, but to teachers who may only have a few English learners in their classrooms. Regardless of the specific participants, such activities must be effective and fully meet the requirements of Section 3115C2 of the Elementary and Secondary Education Act. Title III funds may also be used to provide professional development for other educators who work with ELs to include paraprofessionals, counselors, and special education teachers. Element 15. Procedures to determine English language proficiency of students and notification requirements. English proficiency testing. The PSU will provide schedules for English proficiency testing, an outline or summary of procedures used at the district school charter lab school level, an outline or summary of procedures used at the district level, and a template of the letter to notify parents of the results of the English language proficiency test. Consistency is key for the testing schedule. If the district is too large, then sample school schedules may be provided. Parent notification of EL participation. The PSU will provide a copy of the parent notification letter to inform of student identification or participation in the EL program. The notification to parents of students identified to participate or are participating in the EL program must be given no later than 30 days after the beginning of the school year. This notification must include the following. The reasons for the identification of the student as an EL and in need of placement in a language instruction educational program. The child's level of English proficiency, how such a level was assessed and the status of the child's achievement. The methods of instruction used in the program in which their child is or will be participating and the methods of instruction used in other available programs, including how such programs differ in content, instructional goals, and the use of English and a native language in instruction. How 
the program in which their child is or will be participating will meet the educational strengths and needs of their child. How such program will specifically help their child learn English and meet age appropriate academic achievement standards for grade promotion and graduation. The specific exit requirements for the program including the expected rate of transition from such program into classrooms that are not tailored for ELs and the expected rate of graduation from high school, including four year adjusting cohort graduation rated and extended year adjusted cohort graduation rates for such programs. If funds under Title I and or Title III are used for children in high school, in the case of a child with a disability, how such program meets the objectives of the IEP of the child. And information pertaining to parental rights that includes written guidance detailing the right that parents must have their child immediately removed from the EL program. The options that parents have to decline to enroll their child in the EL program or to choose another program method if available and assisting parents in selecting among various programs and methods of instruction if more than one program or method is offered by the eligible entity. Element 16, provision of instruction for English learners and or immigrant children and youth. Program planning and activities to support MLs and immigrant children. The PSU must provide evidence of program planning and evaluation activities to enhance instruction for English learners and immigrant children and youth. Best practices for supporting MLs and immigrant children. It is crucial to the success of ELs that teachers are trained on how to support both English learners, English language development, and their mastery of academic content knowledge. Element 17, language fluency of teachers. PSU criteria for determine, determining fluency. The PSU will provide a list of PSU criteria for determining fluency for written and oral communication skills and a sample or template of documents used in the process of verifying fluency, such as rubrics or checklists used to assess oral fluency and documentation of written skills. PSU criteria for determining fluency best practice. Access to effective educators is critical for supporting ELs. Research has shown that teacher effectiveness is strongly correlated with student success. In order to promote positive educational outcomes for English learners, preparation and professional development for teachers of ELs and school leaders should improve instruction, increase teachers and school leaders' ability to implement effective curricula for ELs, increase students' English language proficiency, and improve students' academic achievement. Preparation and professional development programs for teachers of ELs should be based on the highest available level of evidence and should be measured to determine their effectiveness. When measuring the effectiveness of the professional development activities, PSUs should assess not only teacher competencies and skills, but also performance data and measurements of student outcomes. Did you know there is a series of videos that you can view to prepare for your monitoring event? There are two required videos for all PSUs preparing for a monitoring visit. The required videos are the monitoring guidelines video. This video provides an overview of the entire monitoring event from notification to closer. Also, all PSUs should watch part one of the CPCM monitoring instrument series. 
This video provides general guidance related to the documentation and comprehensive review of the required consolidated elements, elements one through five, on the CPCM instrument, which apply to all PSUs. Before the pre-monitoring meeting with the lead program administrator for the monitoring event, please be sure to view the optional videos for the title programs in which the PSU participates. The required and optional videos will be hyperlinked to this presentation and posted on the Office of Federal Programs website. Thank you for viewing the video presentation for elements 14 through 17 for Title III Part A. Please let us know if you have any questions.